Hello and welcome to this open day presentation for the postgraduate programmes in mental health at the School of Nursing Midwifery at Trinity College, Dublin. My name is uh, John Dinsmore and I'm the course coordinator. Uh, my role as course coordinator is to advise uh, and support you as you progress uh, as part of the master's programme, uh, whether that be uh, at certificate, diploma or at master's level. Um, at the end of the presentation, I, I'll provide my email and if anyone has any queries on the presentation or on the course or on the application, um, they can uh, contact me um, and I'll, I'll get back to them. In this open day presentation, I, I want to cover those areas that are most relevant uh, to the program. I want to give you uh, a, a detailed breakdown of it uh, so you get a, a really solid understanding of what the program entails uh, and what your commitment to that program will be. Um, so we will we'll look to cover a number of things in this presentation. We will we'll look at the aim of the course, uh, the course philosophy and structure, the mode of delivery, the clinical components, the assessments, the resources and support that are available to you at Trinity College, uh, the entry criteria, including the admissions and applications, uh, the commitment in terms of your time. Uh, and I guess at the end of this presentation, it's important that you uh, reflect uh, and evaluate whether this program is right for you and, and where you're at in terms of your particular uh, career pathway uh, and career stage. At the very end, uh, I'll provide some key links that you can also access as well as some uh, key contacts, my own, uh, the postgraduate studies team email uh, and academic registry. Just to give you a, a, a quick introduction and some background, um, in 2005, uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences at Trinity College, in, in partnership with the National Forensic Mental Health Service and, and St. Patrick's University Hospital, developed this taught uh, master's postgraduate diploma and certificate course. The course continues to run in partnership with the National Forensic Mental Health Service and is designed to enhance an interdisciplinary approach to education by maximizing the collaboration between disciplines working with individuals with mental health problems. Uh, as such, uh, students on this course will come from a variety of professions that include nursing, medicine, occupational therapy, social work and Garda Shikana, from legal, psychology, probation and pr prison uh, services. Uh, and the course values these past experiences uh, from these particular careers uh, and seeks to integrate them as a rich source of reflection and learning between students uh, across modules within the program. The aim of the course is to provide an opportunity for students to develop a sound academic base to their practice uh, and to critically explore and critique mental health services. Students are enabled to reflect, inquire, critique, problem solve, evaluate and debate professional and practice issues in an academically robust manner in order to make valuable informed contributions to the development of their mental health knowledge. Those particularly on the master's pathway are empowered to generate evidence that will improve practice and are guided and supported through the process via experienced academic supervisors here at the school. Students in the course are viewed as active participants uh, with responsibility for their own learning and development and hence the curriculum is focused on a transactional model of education which strives to be collegial in nature uh, in promoting independent, self-directed uh, learning and self-evaluation. And overall graduates in applying their learning from the course can be expected to provide high quality care, leadership and education and to promote and develop excellence in their practice setting. This leads me on to the, the course philosophy. Students on the program are recognized as practicing. Uh, professionals uh, with a resource of practice and educational skills and knowledge that will enhance their learning at this advanced stage of their personal and professional pathway. Indeed, each student brings to this course unique, as I've said, life experiences, you know, motivations for learning, different learning styles and scholastic ability. As such, throughout the program, a wide variety of student-focused teaching strategies are used, including cooperative learning, self-directed learning and experiential learning methods. Uh, and indeed, we look at providing you know, an interdisciplinary sharing of knowledge and perspectives, and this is particularly encouraged and rewarded. Indeed, students have an opportunity to engage in shaping aspects of the educational program 
via the interdisciplinary approach that we have uh, as part of, of the postgraduate uh, programs in mental health. In terms of the, the course structure, uh, the entire course, that is to master's level, uh, will take two academic years on a part-time basis, attending college one day per week. Um, it's normally Thursdays in the first year and Wednesdays in the second. Um, on a full-time basis, college attendance is twice a week, and that's normally on Wednesday and Thursday. For orientation week, if you do come on part of the course, it is recommended that the uh, part-time students need to be free for one full week at the beginning of the course with full-time students free for three full weeks at the beginning. So students may opt to also exit the course on successful completion of one year uh, and they'll receive uh, an award of a postgraduate certificate or a diploma depending on their pathway. For Part-time students, you must have at least 60 ECTSs to proceed to year two. And if you choose to do this, you will forfeit the option of a postgraduate diploma and exit on successful completion of year two with the award of Masters in Mental Health, which is the equivalent of 90 ECTSs. This slide provides a detailed breakdown of the course pathways and modules with ECTS as required. The first column details the range of modules available in the course with the module code in the second column. In the third column, the ECTS is for each module are listed. With the exception of NU8007, the dissertation module, which is 30 ECTSs and it's listed there at the very bottom, all other modules are 10 ECTSs. Firstly, looking at the mental health only pathway, uh, which is columns four to six, those on the mental, sorry, those on the postgraduate certificate course, uh, column four, will need to complete NU7412, Deconstructing Theoretical Perspectives on Human Distress, as well as two of the three elective modules that will be available and are listed in the table between NU7413, Interface Between Mental Health and Criminal Justice, and NU7419, Interprofessional Family Work. With regards to the elective modules, students undertaking the certificate will be invited to rank uh, their preferred modules. The three modules that receive the highest preference of votes will be run and students will be expected to successfully complete two of these in order to obtain the certificate. With regards to the Mental Health Postgraduate Diploma, which is column five, students must complete modules NU7412, NU7410, NU7013 and NU7005. They will then be expected to complete two of the three elective modules between NU7413 and NU7418 and they're voted for in the same manner as previously outlined for the certificate. Finally, for the Masters in Mental Health, students must complete all modules with the tick beside them, including the dissertation module. Um, and you can see those listed in the table. It is important to remember that those modules with the tick beside them, each pathway must be completed in order for you, you to achieve um, uh, the award in that pathway. If, for example, in the mental health postgraduate certificate, you register and progress in NU7410 instead of NU7412, then the latter will not count towards your ECTS. So please make sure you're familiar with this table and what modules you must complete as part of your program or part of your course. With regards to mental health psychosocial intervention strand, column seven to nine, the same principles apply. Those modules with the ticks beside them must be completed in each, each of the courses. Please note that for the psychosocial interventions and child, adolescents and family strands, no elective options are available. Taking the postgraduate cert in psychosocial uh, interventions, um, which is in column seven, the three modules that must be completed are NU7412, NU7418 and NU7419. For the postgraduate diploma uh, in column eight, six modules must be completed, um, NU7412, NU7410, NU7013, NU7418, NU7419 and the clinical module NU7405. Uh, Please also note for both the psychosocial and child, adolescent and family strands that only those students undertaking a diploma or master's must complete the respective clinical module. Those on a certificate pathway in these strands do not complete a clinical module and there is no clinical module for the uh, mental health uh, co courses outlined in columns four to six. Moving now to the 
psychosocial uh, master's course, uh, the seven modules listed with ticks beside them must be completed, uh, as mentioned before, and, and, um, and that includes the clinical and, and dissertation modules. Finally, the child, adolescent and family strand, the same principle supply as previously outlined in the psychosocial intervention strand. Um, it's important to note that the modules across each of the pathways with the tick beside them here also must be completed. Okay, um, just to draw your attention uh, to the clinical module, um, the clinical module for the child, uh, adolescent and family strand is NU7422 um, and the clinical module for the psychosocial intervention strand is NU7505. So these modules are offered uh, to build on the students' previous knowledge and experience and they are designed uh, to, to assist students to advance and apply their knowledge to their current practice um, or the knowledge in those modules to their, their current practice. Regards delivery of the course, a blended learning approach is utilized in the delivery of the theoretical content, which includes lectures, group discussions and, and self-directed learning. As previously outlined, um, year one commences with uh, a full week in September. Uh, and therefore one or two days per week for the remainder uh, of the academic year, depending on whether the course has been undertaken full-time or part-time. Um, for those who opt to continue into year two, attendance is expected for workshops throughout the academic year, uh, and students will also work closely with their supervisors across two years on their literature reviews, research ideas, proposals, and final thesis. Uh, dissertation. As also previously mentioned, the course focuses very much on an interdisciplinary learning approach. So traditionally, healthcare education was provided by individual professions, thus there was no real link between professionals. However, best practice requires that practitioners, sorry, sorry, requires practitioners to work as part of multidisciplinary teams. So the course has been designed to address interprofessional issues, uh, trying to understand learnings and perspectives from uh, different professional backgrounds. The benefits to this mode of delivery are that core competencies and common themes relevant to all practitioners are identified uh, for example, you know, person-centered care, recovery-focused care. Um, a more holistic view of a person with mental health problems is developed through this style of course learning, and students get the opportunity to explore and understand different perspectives as part of their professional development with the course providing a safe area to explore ideas while simultaneously respecting the professional boundaries that we all come from. At this point, I'd just like to take a brief moment to discuss COVID-19 and the delivery of the course in the next academic year. As with all things related to the pandemic, there is some uncertainty to the module delivery um, in terms of that balance between online and face-to-face -face learning. As it presently stands, uh, lectures and tutorials are, are being delivered live online um, through the Blackboard platform that we use here in Trinity. Um, those lectures are also recorded and we upload recordings so that if, if a student can't attend, they can access all the materials um, at any time. Um, so that's primarily how we're delivering it. We are uh, aiming and we have been aiming to ensure we deliver as normal uh, a postgraduate experience as possible to students. Uh, we will continue to do that um, next year with the course. Um, again, we will be constantly uh, be reflecting on the government guidelines in terms of whether we can get students back into the university. Um, and once we, we, with more clarity, we will let people uh, know, of course, um, but um, as, it, as it is at the moment, it's online, but, you know, we hope to go back to uh, a more uh, blended learning approach um, in the next academic year, all being well. I'm just going to move on now to talk about the, the clinical component. So this is um, 
related to those students that will be on the psychosocial interventions or the child, adolescent, and family uh, diploma and master's uh, courses, they will need to complete uh, clinical modules. Uh, the module leads are also the education facilitators that will work closely with you and your perceptors uh, with regards to the program. Um, Mark Monaghan is the uh, Dr. Mark Monaghan. Sorry, is the uh, module lead and education facilitator for the psychosocial intervention strand, and Patrina Tai is the module lead and education facilitator for the child, adolescent, and family uh, strand. I just uh, decided to put in this slide um, a list of the module leaders, so you can see um, all of the individuals that will uh, teach you as part of the, the course itself. Um, you can check their profiles out um, on the School of Nursing Midwifery website, and I've just added a link there in the bottom. In terms of assessments, um, the course assessment process is a combination of written and practical assignments, including academic essays, reflective writing, online assessment, critiques of clinical and classroom teaching practice, peer presentations, and for those completing the full master's program, a research proposal and research dissertation. For those in the psychosocial and child, adolescent and family strands, completing the diploma or master's pathway, clinical and practice based learning and assessment is also required. Uh, these students need to achieve clinical competency in the clinical practice module to be awarded the postgraduate diploma or master's. For those students um, completing the research and dissertation modules, um, and those are listed as NU7013 and NU8007, a supervisor will be allocated to support you through your literature review research proposal and dissertation. Um, I'd like just to remind, you know, anyone coming on to the course that there's some key points in terms of how we approach the assignment. So, you know, all assignments are uh, to, to be submitted on, on their due date. Um, only assignments with extenuating circumstances will receive extensions. Uh, this must be requested at least a week in advance with evidence if required. So that could be, for example, a medical certificate. Um, please note, um, or please always keep copies, sorry, off your work and ensure it's always backed up. We remind students of that. Um, you know, it, it really is the student's re responsibility to ensure that you save copies of your work as part of the program uh, and submit that work on time. In terms of the the clinical assessments, um, those on the psychosocial interventions and child, adolescent and family strands, as mentioned, will have to undertake, uh, you know, uh, the respective clinical modules. Um, and these will be required to complete the clinical competency assessments. So this includes uh, a portfolio document, um, which is a record of uh, the formative assessment of professional practice that is maintained by the student and their perceptor. Students engaging in practice modules will be providing specialist care uh, to uh, patients and or clients and, and their significant others at uh, their base practice site with clinical competency assessed primarily uh, by their primary perceptor. In all clinical sites, the preceptors are competent practitioners in their care specialism. Um, their, their roles include guiding the students' clinical learning experience while simultaneously acting as a role model and a clinical resource. Uh, there are three scheduled assessment review points during the academic year, and these are typical, typically sorry, in, in January, uh, March and May. Um, uh, so uh, it's just to make you aware of that. And I would also recommend that, you know, if you're deciding to come on to those um, particular courses that you speak um, to a potential preceptor in advance um, to see will they come on board and support you um, as part of your, your um, as part of your course. In terms of the resources uh, and support, um, and I might just, just to go back to this slide, actually, um, it is really important that we have a perceptor in place um, before um, you begin those clinical modules. Um, so um, I just want to re-emphasize that, re that point um, just around um, 
speaking to potential preceptors in advance of, of you know even applying for the course just to make sure that you're you're really well set up um, if you're accepted onto the course in terms of resources and support students have a uh, uh, physical and remote access to TCD resources and supports. I've also already mentioned Blackboard, for example, in terms of online learning, but you'll also have you know, access to the library. Um, there's a great support in terms of student learning development, both within college and within the school, and you receive a, a you know, course handbook, which will outline uh, in detail all of the re those resources available. Um, you'll also have access, for example, to the sports centre uh, at Trinity, uh, and you'll all receive a, a Trinity student card for uh, on-campus access. So just to briefly uh, outline the entry criteria, candidates will be currently working in the mental health or mental illness field. In the case of psychosocial intervention and child, adolescent and family strands, you must be working in related mental health services and have a minimum of one year's recent experience in the areas. Uh, primarily we look in the last two years. Um, for those also on the psychosocial intervention and child, adolescent and family strands, you must have got a clearance for working with vulnerable individuals. And that's relevant to the diploma and the, the master's courses. Uh, particularly because, uh, sorry, because of that clinical module. Uh, normally candidates will hold an honours degree in a relevant discipline or otherwise satisfy the selection panel that you have the ability to complete uh, and benefit from the course. So that could be, for example, in terms of you have a vast amount of experience in the area. Nurses or midwives undertaking uh, any of the courses while well, based in Ireland, must be currently registered on the appropriate division of the live register held by the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland. With regards admissions and applications, um, you see the Trinity website for the link to the electronic application pro process. I, I'll have a link at the end of this presentation. Um, you complete the application form online. Um, we typically ask for two references, one academic and one professional. In terms of the uh, mental health only strand, because there's no clinical component, you can't submit two academic references. Um, we will also ask for official transcripts of your degrees, um, also the parchments, um, and in some cases the curriculum vitae, and all of the documentation is required before we can make a firm offer. So, so detailed guidance online, you can start your application to save it and add the relevant documentation um, as requested uh, as part of the process. Um, the closing date, uh, just to mention, is the 31st of July 2021. Um, and just finally, just to say, in terms of the, the degree, uh, we primarily look for uh, applicants to have a 2-1 uh, degree level. If you have less than a 2-1, you can uh, make a case on your application form that can be reviewed by the selection panel and as well as the Dean of Graduate Studies Office, and a, a decision will be made based on, on the case presented. In terms of commitment to the course, um, again, that varies in term, you know, depend on what, on what particular course you um, are on under, undertaking, but generally it could be around 10 to 15 hours per week. You are required to attend tutorials um, and lectures. In terms of the lectures this year, um, we have recorded them because they have been online. They have been made available for individuals to attend if they cannot attend. Um, in terms of the course itself, you are continually assessed throughout the course. So um, it is quite um, an undertaking. So it's, it's best to be prepared for that uh, and to understand that you have the ability to um, you know, uh, divert time to successfully complete uh, the master's program. In terms of the skills that you will develop and that you utilize, this will be primarily around uh, research, um, reading, discussion uh, with your colleagues, with the, the lecturers, um, you know, analysis of the uh, materials within the modules, uh, and particularly, you know, it's, there is a, a, at this point an emphasis on that ability to adapt to online learning uh, as well. So as we come towards the end of, of the presentation, um, I guess the key question is, um, is this program right for you? And, and you know, it's important that you reflect on why you want to do the program. Uh, I would suggest if you can to talk to past uh, students about their experiences uh, with the program and with Trinity um, and also to reflect with them and, and, and 
in terms of career development and how it can help uh, with your career development, I, I think completing a master's program, you know, um, can help in, with anyone's career pathways or plan if, if you don't have one already. Um, it could be important if you're reflecting on a career change within uh, your particular profession or if you're thinking just of maybe uh, moving on with your academic career. So in terms of, you know, if you start on the search, progressing towards a master's um, or if you, you know, come into the master's program and you want to move more into understanding, for example, clinical research or you want to move into the academic pathway uh, um, and, and look at, um, you know, potential PhD in the future, this would be the right step in stone for you. Um, and it's definitely something that I would advise uh, that you undertake if you're looking at that as part of your uh, career pathway. So finally, I just put um, a, a link here. So this is the link to the courses. Um, once you click on this link and you go to the bottom of the page, you will see the various options to apply for the various courses. Um, and you just click on them and it will bring you to a realm portal. You can then start that process. I've also just provided um, two email addresses here, one to the Postgraduate Studies Office here in the School of Nursing Midwifery, who can also advise in terms of your your application and the requirements needed, um, as well as academic registry. So um, all of the details are on the website, um, as well as guidance in terms of those contact points that I have I've listed there as well. So that concludes this open day presentation. I hope you found it informative um, and please feel free to follow up with me or the postgraduate team or academic registry if you have any further queries. Um, I'd like to thank you once again for your time today and your interest in the courses. Um, and hopefully you'll be keen to join us here at Trinity College. Thank you once again and have a lovely day.